Hi, this is John Wood from Automatic. Uh, today I'm just going to give you a, a sneak peek of a little productivity tool we've been working on. Um, so if you have a look here, we've got the, the start of the program, six extra points, plain line, manual alignment, switch to, switch to DCC mode, some more points, more constructive planes, lines, and a, a DCC alignment. Um, so if you're like me, when you're writing a program, you seem to spend half your time actually writing your program and the other half of the time renaming features to uh, something meaningful and you come back to it at a later date or if someone else has to work with it, they've got an idea of what's going on. Uh, I was recently on a customer site uh, working with programs written by various other people and there were hundreds and hundreds of points and constructed into dozens of planes, features and they were really difficult to navigate. Uh, so this tool was born out of uh, working with these these programs um, that were a bit, a bit of a mess, uh, to be honest. And it was just a case of uh, I, I thought I'd write this little little app to to help me out, and it kind of snowballed into uh, into a bit of a tool that's got a, a bit more functionality than that. Um, so I'm just going to add a few more features onto this on uh, the program, and then we'll have a, a little look at the tool. Uh, so PCDMUS uh, or Hexagon in recent years have made lots of uh, excellent little enhancements in terms of productivity. Uh, so for example, you've got shift and click and control and shift and click. I'm on 2018 here, so on this version, I can, for example, I can hold on shift and uh, click to create circles. So it's just going on with the default uh, settings or whatever was used for that auto feature last, uh, but we're going to see in a second matter. In later versions, you've got the ability to uh, uh, select the surface, and then, uh, in fact, you can do it in this version. But there's some there's some slight variations in in, in how this works uh, from sort of this version on to 2019. Uh, this also ties in with the measurement strategy editor, but I just find it a little bit uh, unintuitive, a little bit cumbersome, and obviously it only works when you're kind of creating those features at the time. Uh, this tool you'll see that allows us to uh, modify uh, a lot of settings, a lot of uh, feature parameters, uh, retrospectively. They're really useful. Really useful functionality. Anyway, so I've constructed some circles around there. Um, if I hold down shift, you know, let's just stick a, a couple of cylinders in and a cone. And again, I don't even know what these settings are in terms of hits and number of depths and stuff like that, but we'll, we'll come to that in a second. And then if I do control and shift and click, I can just stick some uh, points on here for this, uh, this profile, this contoured surface. So if I uh, put a feature set of the points. And construct a circle, a PCD, circles 2 to 9. So at this point, it's all sort of fresh in my mind. I can remember what features, what, but so you come back to this at a later date. You've got circles 1 through 75, and it all gets a bit confusing. So, uh, I've got the feature set over just been left with the default name. Um, it's okay, but it, it's a bit messy and not, not that good to work with. So, if I open up the uh, over to the tool, and if I just hit start refresh, it will just update with the latest program and read in all the, uh, all the feature commands in the program. And uh, what the tool so initially it was to, to rename constructed features. So what this allows me to do is if I plane one, press bit plane, shows me the points used in there. Uh, so this is my manual alignment. Uh, so I could just call it manual plane. And if I hit rename commands, uh, the feature itself gets renamed. And the points used within that feature also get renamed. So, plane P1, P3. Um, 
I can change what, you know the key one, it can be point one or whatever you want to call it. Right, so if I put PNT in there, if I select line one and this is the manual alignment again, so let's call it manual line and rename commands. And then uh, we can do the same further down. So we've got plane two. So let's say this is uh, off the drawing, data may, we end commands. So basically, I do not program. Uh, it's a real time saver. It takes a little while to process the commands in there, especially on a bigger program. Uh, but if you've got lots of, lots of features and Still a massive time saver. And then down at the end, we've got this scan three and this uh, this PCB here. So scan, let's just call it. Um, let's call it surface profile. And you can see it's just updated all those, all those points that make up that surface profile. Okay, uh, so this is what the tool was originally intended to do, and it, it does it very well. Um, something else I thought of um, is that I, uh, I spend a lot of time, uh, you know, if I measure circles, say it's 15.1 mil diameter, I'll call it 15 underscore 1 circle one or hole one or something like that. Uh, but it's always uh, I'm always creating the name or typically creating the name based off the, the diameter of the feature and the this is circles and cylinders. Uh, so over here I'd uh, flip back to PC and also add circles two to nine. And so if I select circles two to nine over here I can just auto name those. Now I use an underscore and point with a decimal in space. Uh, in place of a decimal point, um, but you know, you P or point, um, you could use a decimal point if you wanted, or I'd advise against it. Uh, but I just tend to use underscore. Uh, yeah, so I've got two to nine selected here, and I just say auto name circles and cylinders. And my prefix at the moment over there is um, for circles is whole, so these are going to come out before. Uh, Pixie underscore four or one, uh, which if we look at one of them in the program, you can see one mil diameter hole. Okay, um, so that's a handy little tool. And then finally, uh, I just created all these circles and cylinders without really looking at any of the settings. Uh, but if I just select um, my eight holes here, I can just go over and uh, examine some of the properties, like number of hits. And say, okay, well, I don't want five hits on those hits, seven, and I can just take the parameters. I didn't check the depth, two mil knots fine. Uh, avoidance mode, oh, it's current on both, but I've got a clear plane on here, so I could um, uh, I could switch that to no. Uh, and, uh, this, this is the sort of stuff you typically either F9 the feature, go in and change it on the toolbox or do it in the edit window and again you kind of search around for where that setting is. Um, we've got 50, you know, we've only got 8 here but you can see how uh, what time saver it is. Um, so yeah, so there's, there's some bits to add into this yet but I just promised a few people uh, a bit of a preview of, of, of what it would do and how it was going. Um, yeah, so we can uh, we can rename uh, constructed features and the points or the features contained uh, within them. Uh, we can pick the name that circles and cylinders based on the diameter, and then we've got a really quick way of going in and uh, adding or modifying parameters uh, for auto features. Um, so we've kind of got the the hits, the depth, number of rows, the ending offset, samples. All, all the really common ones uh, that you might have on there. Um, uh, a few more need adding in here, like pitch and hand hole and things like that. But 
it doesn't really have an idea of, of what the tool would do. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you've got any feedback, comments, um, or suggestions on that, I'd be really happy to hear from you. Um, and yeah, uh, just let me know what you think. Alright, thank you.